Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. My name is Brian Peek. I'm a cloud developer advocate for Azure. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a multiplayer server scaling with Azure Container Instances, Event Grid, and Azure Functions. So, uh, I just want to point out the other name that's on this, Demetrius Ganatsios. He, uh, he wrote about 98% of this demo. So uh, he couldn't be here, so you're unfortunately stuck with me delivering this talk, but so I want to make sure credit is given where credit is due. Also wanted to, to mention that I'm giving this talk to a sold out house. You probably can't see it on camera right now, but the entire audience is full, so it's a very popular topic that you're all watching. So what I'm going to talk about today is this, this scenario. So let's say you wanted to create a stateful, isolated multiplayer service, and you want it to be lightweight, and you want it to be scalable on demand with some bonus points for per second billing and uh, scaling all this automatically so you're not having to monitor this all by yourself or dragging sliders up and down when uh, load gets too high and whatnot. So we're going to kind of build out that scenario here using the, the technologies we just talked about. So as a demo for this, we're going to use the game Open Arena, which is an open source game. It's actually based off the old Quake engine that id released and open sourced a billion years ago. Um, I think this is live streaming right now, so actually if you're at home and want to try this demo out with me, you can go to any of the links that are on screen there, which are basically aka.ms slash OA dash, and then desktop, Android, or iOS, and that'll download uh, the Open Arena game that we'll use to connect later on, so you can actually uh, put some load on the server so I won't have to fake it later. So the components that we're going to use for this demo are Docker, Azure Container Instances, Azure Storage, and specifically we're going to use uh, File Share and Table Storage, Azure Functions, and Event Grid. So let's talk a little bit about those pieces. What's Docker? So you can think of Docker as a lightweight VM, a lightweight virtual machine, but in reality it's not a virtual machine at all, so stop thinking about it that way. But uh, what we're going to do, what, how Docker works is it works on images that are, store, that are typically called containers and they're stored in a registry somewhere. But uh, the big piece here is that Docker doesn't virtualize the entire guest operating system. It only virtualizes the pieces of your application. So your uh, Docker containers are actually very small. In the case of Open Arena, our container is, a, is actually less than 10 megabytes. So instead of having to provision a new VM and spin up you know, 20 gigs of operating system files under the hood in addition to your binaries, all you're spinning up is the binaries, which is, saves time saves, and saves money too. Um, the next piece is Azure Container Instances, which is in preview right now. Uh, it'll be out of preview very, very, very soon. Uh, but these run Docker containers. You can throw a Docker image at it and it will just run it. Now the beauty of this is that you can scale these on demand. You only pay by the second, so you're not having to run a VM or, average, or run a physical machine uh, and pay for that for the course of a week, a month, a year, however long that machine is running. You only ever pay for how long that instance is running. So and it's actually billed by second. So if you run it for one minute and 47 seconds, that's how long you pay for. Um, and the other nice bonus of this is that because there's no machine associated with it to you, there's no patching, there's no upgrading, there's no maintenance, you just run the container. So all of that is hidden away from you. You don't need to worry about security and things like that. As I said, we're going to touch on two pieces of storage, file and table. We'll talk more about those later. Azure functions are a big part of this. Uh, functions uh, you can, are considered serverless, which means just like, kind of like the Azure Container instances, you don't have to provision a server, you don't have to set up a VM or anything like that. A function is a, set, a, a, a listing of code that you want to execute. You can write them in Node, you can write them in C-sharp, they can be triggered on various things like HTTP, so just you hit an endpoint and the trigger will run, timers, event grid, which we'll talk about in a second. And this is a consumption, they run by default on, the, on a consumption plan, which means you only pay for what you use. So if you execute that function a million times, you pay for a million usages. If you execute it five times, you pay for five executions. Then the final piece is event grid. So event grid is one of the many services that exist in Azure that allow you to handle events. Um, one of the great things about event grid, though, is that it provides endpoints and um, has support for all of the features of Azure itself. And why we need this is when an Azure container instance spins up, we need to be, we, we need to be known, it needs to be known when that container has finished spinning. Um, we need to be notified. So the event grid will actually notify us when the container is up and running, and then we can continue with the next part, which is to get the IP address and other bits information for people to connect to it. You can also write your own, uh, use your own applications and third-party events that you can add to this, but we're going to use just the built-in ones that are part of Azure. 
So the basic architecture is this. We have our Azure Container Instances, which run an open arena server, which is a Docker image stored in the actual Docker registry. I'll actually show you where that lives. You can actually see it right here at uh, hub.docker.com. This is the actual image that we're going to use. Um, there's a file share, and we do this because Open Arena's got about 450 megabytes of assets, and we don't, we don't need to spin those up every time. Those are static, they're read-only, it's all the textures and uh, sound effects and whatnot in the game. So in our Docker file, what we've set up is we just, we just mount this uh, file share that has all the Open Arena read-only static files on it. So we only need to spin up that 10 megabyte instance, not the 450 megabyte instance every time. We use Azure Functions, which is actually the management interface for uh, the entire thing. I'll show you the list of what those functions are, but that's, that's, that, that's how we spin up, shut down, monitor those instances. Event Grid, as I said, we're gonna, that's going to help us know when uh, uh, instances spin up and when they're deleted. And finally, Table Storage, which we just use to grab IP addresses, uh, the port number that the image is running on, where the image came from, just some other statistics that we might need in order to run this service. And I'm just going to look at the Azure functions here, quickly go through a couple of them, because we're going to, you'll see them later on. Um, ACI Monitor is an Azure function that is uh, triggered by Event Grid, and that's the one that lets us know when a container instance is created, deleted, changed, or failed. So we don't need to, all we need to do is hook that up uh, in the portal, you can also do it from the command line, but uh, it just will fire every time something changes with our Azure Container instance. There's ACI Autoscaler, which is timer triggered. This runs, you can determine how, how frequently you want. I think we have it set at a minute or five minutes by default. And what it does is it looks at the number of container instances we have running, how many players are playing, and will scale up if we are about to hit the edge, or scale down if we have too many empty slots. And then AGI GC is a timer triggered uh, function, just like Autoscaler. Um, and why this exists is for, in our autoscaler, if we decide we need to scale in, we want to delete an instance, we don't actually want to delete it immediately because there might still be players on that instance. So what happens is the state gets set to marked for deletion and that garbage collector, which might run every minute, every five minutes, is what looks for things in the table that are zero sessions that are marked for deletion and that's what actually deletes the container instance from the server. And then the other ones will, aren't really important right now. You can read these uh, later on in the slides that'll be available. So talk a little bit about the autoscaler. Um, we have a kind of an experimental one in here that's written a bit specifically for Open Arena. But the idea here is you could take this function and rewrite it for your game. Uh, but by default, what we do is we check the number of user instances, the number of uh, servers, and if that's greater than 80% of the max that we define, uh, ACI create will be called to spin up a new instance because we're about to get to that edge of where we're not going to have enough player slots available. And then conversely, if we're about less than 60% of the number of instances is more than our minimum, then we set the state on that to mark for deletion. Again, we don't delete it because there might still be players on it, and then that garbage collection process will delete it automatically later. And there's a cooldown period of about 10 minutes, and you, all, these can, all these variables are configurable uh, in the Azure portal. They're all just environment variables. Um, we just have some smart defaults built in there for now. So to go through just a picture version of what's happening here. When we start out, there's no containers. We call ACI create to create the first one. You'll see it's in state creating. When it's complete, event grid calls our ACI monitor function, and the state is updated to running. And by that time, we now have a, a public IP address which is written into a, an Azure table. A bunch of players might connect to that first container group. You see the in, in number of sessions went up to eight. Autoscaler's running constantly every minute or so, and it realizes, hey, we're about to cross that threshold. We need a new instance, so ACI create is called again, and a second instance is created. The same thing happens here. It's in the creating state. When it's done being provisioned, ACI monitor is called by event grid. We got our public IP address. It's now running, people start connecting to that second instance. So now we have two instances of people playing our game. Eventually, players disconnect from that second instance, and in the, uh, we realize now that we don't need the second instance anymore. There's only one person using it. They could go play on container one next time. So Autoscaler runs as it always does periodically. It sets the state on that container as marked for deletion. Again, it doesn't delete it. When all the users have left, the active sessions is now zero. The garbage collector runs again periodically, just like the uh, autoscaler, um, and ACI delete is called for that instance because its active sessions was zero and it was marked for deletion. So let's actually see it in action here. So what I'm going to do here is go to this web portal, openarena.aci, azurewebsites.net, 
And we have one, con one container instance running, and it's running on this IP address, 13.91. blah, blah, blah. Let me uh, minimize my slides here. So I'm going to start up Open Arena, the actual client application. Move it up here. Now, one of the things I forgot, I failed to mention was that uh, we didn't modify the Open Arena. Hey, everything's fine. Everything's fine. It's not like this is live or anything. It's fine, totally fine. One of the things I forgot to mention was that we didn't modify the uh, Open Arena binary on the server whatsoever, or the client for that matter. Um, the only thing that we have is a script that's capturing standard out and standard error, and uh, Open Arena by default will, will send a log message every time someone connects or disconnects. So we, that's how we know how many players are, are playing at any given time. So I'll go to multiplayer, I'll go to specify, I'll type in the IP address 13.91.92.244. And we can actually connect to that game right there. So we are playing against that Azure container instance of Open Arena. And I am the only person playing. But if we switch back to our website and refresh, you can see the number of sessions now has moved up to one. I'm the only player on here. Cool. So that, that is, uh, that's how we track the number, the number of sessions. So let's, uh, let's say a bunch of other people connect. And I can fake this. I'll go into Azure Storage Explorer, and I'll go into our table. This is the table that drives that website, and you can see there's one active session. I'm going to change this to 10 active sessions. So we'll assume that 10 people have connected. If we come back over to the website, we'll see that our active sessions is 10. Close this down over here. We don't need that running. And what I'll do is I'll go to the uh, Azure portal, <coughs> and I will manually execute our autoscaler. I have the autoscaler and the garbage collector disabled by now, so they don't conflict with the demo that I'm trying to run here. But if I click on Run for ACI Autoscaler, and we'll scroll down a bit here, there is a log window that you'll see. Oh, make sure my number of instances is up. Oh. So the game, so one of the things Open Arena does is games are only 15 minutes long. I think we just hit the end of a game session because this container's been running for quite a while. Let me set it back to 10 again. Back to 10, go back here, clear the log, run open or auto scaler. And if you look at the log window down here, we should see that it wants to scale out. So scale in is false, scale out is true. It means we need another server because we're, we're at 10 players and the max is 12. So if we go back to our Azure Storage Explorer and refresh, you'll see we now have another instance in our table. And if we scroll to the right here, you'll see that the state of that is now creating, and we don't have a public IP address. So this actually spins up pretty quickly. Um, it actually takes a little bit longer for Event Grid to let us know that the thing is done before, uh, before we can start using it than it actually does to spin up the whole instance. So we can re we'll continue coming back here and refresh, but in the meantime, what I wanted to show you uh, is because all these, these are all Azure functions, they're all just endpoints that we can hit. Um, using a tool like Postman, which is a, a fantastic tool for, for passing, uh, or for, to hit a REST endpoint, we can actually just manually hit some of these methods and see what they do. The one I wanted to point out was ACI details. Uh, in our body here, it wants to know the container group and the container name. So I'm going to pull up uh, our randomly named container over here and paste that. Now if I click send here, you can see that we're asking for, for the type of logs. What we did was we cache all the stuff that comes out of standard error and standard output so that we can view this, so we can kind of debug this. If our service didn't start up for some reason or we just want to see what's going on on this one instance of the server, this is everything that, that would technically be displayed on the screen if, this, uh, if, if our server had a monitor connected to it. So you can see everything that's going on here. It's a pretty easy way to debug things. But uh, just know that because these are Azure functions, they we basically, they're REST endpoints, we can pass JSON, we can receive JSON, you can actually pass or receive anything you want. Um, but a tool like Postman is great to help with debugging that sort of thing. So let's go back to our table, we'll refresh one more time, and you can see now our services, or our container instance is running, and we have a new public IP address. We'll get these windows out of the way. And if we refresh our web portal, you can see that we have a second instance running right here at a different IP address. So we can go in here to open Arena and restart it. And sometimes it takes a few more seconds past the uh, creation for the port mapping to get set up. We'll give it a try here to 
and we'll try to connect to that one. If the port hasn't been mapped over yet, if we give it a few more seconds, that will uh, connect to the second instance. And actually, we can go back as they are shoutcasting next door on Mixer. One more time here, if I've given enough time. 13.88.181.119. Oh, the port mapping is failing on me here. That's okay. Let's move on to the uh, to the to the descaling of services here. So refresh this one more time. Let me actually set my active sessions from 10 back down to one here, because at this point we realize that we don't need all, both of these services running. We only have one player running. I'm going to give it one more try over here. I don't like giving up. 13.88.181.119. There we go. So the port mapping finally finished there. So now we're actually playing on our second container instance. And if I refresh this, you'll see that both of these now have one active session. So let me exit back out. Yes. Refresh this again. So our, actors, uh, our active sessions is back down to zero on that first instance. So now this is a good time to scale in. So let's go back to um, the Azure portal. We'll go back to our Azure functions. I'm going to manually again call uh, the Azure Autoscaler function. And we'll look at the log here and we should see scale in is equal to true. So what this does, as I said, it, again, it doesn't delete it, but if we refresh, you'll see that its state is now marked for deletion. So in tandem, the garbage collector would be running every minute or so. Again, I'm going to run this manually. And just like that, sometimes it's actually so fast it doesn't capture the log output. If we refresh here, we should see that that instance is now gone and we're down to our original running instance that we, uh, that we, that we started with. Now in the portal, one of the great things about the portal is you can see you have uh, the logs that spit out here. Um, all of these you can actually look at and or edit source code right here in the portal. As I said, these are all Node.js methods, so you can view them uh, uh, instantaneously. Um, I want to show you the environment variables, which are under application settings. So we had our minimum instances set to one, max of 10. Our threshold was 60% uh, and 40%, 0 0.6 and 0.4. Um, but one of the important things here is this container group template. So we have this thing in Azure called Azure Resource Manager, um, which allows you to spin out, basically create resources with, a, with, with some JSON, with a script file. So this, uh, this, this environment variable is basically what that ARM template is in order to spin up our Azure Container Instance for Open Arena. So you could put anything you wanted in there that would spin up your Container Instance, point it to your own image, your own game, whatever it happens to be. Now all this is available on GitHub. There's a link to this at the end, but uh, one of the things, oops, that's Demetrius right there, a handsome guy. One of the things I wanted to point out here was uh, on the GitHub, we have a one-click deployment. If you click this button, you provide your Azure credentials, you specify the name of the function uh, and the resource group, it'll deploy all of this stuff for you and set you up ready to go. You, that's, that's all you need to do. Now, you would then add in your own server backend, whatever your, your multiplayer service might be. If you just want to use one of ours as the demo, if you go to the demos page on the GitHub, we explain how we set this up and create the file store, uh, the shared file storage for Open Arena and uh, how to use the, the Docker instance there. We also have a second game called uh, T-Worlds, which is an open source game that we provide a demo for as well, so you can spin that up and play multiplayer. A absolutely the same principles apply to that game as they do to Open Arena or anything else. So with that, let me uh, jump back to the slides here. This is uh, good information, the, the links for everything. The first one is the link straight to that GitHub repo that I showed you. The next four links are to our documentation on all the pieces that this uh, demo uses, container instances, event grid, and whatnot. And the final piece there is a short link to our ga Azure Gaming uh, hub that we have up right now. Uh, we have some uh, Unity SDKs, we'll have an Unreal SDK up there shortly. There's some tutorials and demos for mono game in Unity, um, and much more is coming. So you can check that out for right now. I'll ask if there are any, I'll leave this up for now, if there are any questions from, again, the packed room. If there are any questions, I know, nope, I guess not. And that said, thanks for joining me for Azure Container Instances and Multiplayer. I'm Brian Peake. Demetrius Ganatsios deserves all the credit. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>